If you're starting from absolute scratch, I don't think you should be a data scientist, uh, at least not yet. And let me explain why not and what I would do instead. Now, I want to make it very clear. I don't think data science is dead at all. Like you might see a lot of YouTubers saying, I don't think it's dead in the least. I freaking love data science and I think it's going to continue to thrive. But at the current moment, I do think there's a better path for you to take if you ultimately want to become a data scientist down the road. So let's first get into the reasons why not to be a data scientist right now. Reason number one is it takes a long time to learn data science and ultimately become a data scientist. And basically, in order to be a data scientist, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to know some math. And number two, you have to be able to do that math with programming. And unfortunately, just the way it is, math is pretty hard to learn. It is not easy to learn. And knowing things like calculus, linear algebra, obviously are important to do things like machine learning. But even if you, let's just say you ignore linear algebra and calculus because it makes your job as a data scientist better. You're a better data scientist if you know those things, but it's not a necessity. Like everyone makes it out to seem. It's helpful, but it's not like you need 100% to understand those and know those a million percent. Even just ignoring all of that, the algorithms, the logic behind the algorithms is pretty tricky. And it takes like uh, a lot of patience and understanding and a lot of like math logic to get these machine learning algorithms down. And as a data scientist, that's like your number one job is to be, you know, using and creating these machine learning algorithms to do data science stuff, to predict stuff, to classify stuff. So you're going to be needing to know mathematics, which just takes a while to, to learn, to be honest. And once you even figure out the math and you can use the machine learning algorithms, you have to be able to use them pretty much via programming. There are some data scientist jobs out there that probably use less programming than you might think. They use tools that kind of do the programming for them, but I think that's few and far between. I think that's where knowing like R or Python comes in. Those are pretty much the two programming languages that you're going to be using as a data scientist to do machine learning. And unfortunately, programming is also hard. It takes a long time to learn. If you've never programmed at all or you've only done a little bit of programming, it's a lot of effort to learn programming from absolute scratch. You're going to have to learn about variables. You're going to have to learn about functions. You're going to have to learn about loops. You're going to have to learn about like classes and uh, parameters and arguments and a bunch of other things that I'm probably forgetting right now. The point is there's actually a lot to learn when it comes to programming and it doesn't really come naturally to everyone. Uh, it is definitely a learned skill that takes patience and years to master. Um, so if you're starting from absolute scratch and you're like not a math whiz and you're not like a programming expert, going from zero to data scientist is going to take a long time because before you're going to be qualified to land data scientist roles, you're going to have to get okay at the math and okay at programming. And don't get me wrong. I love math. I love programming. If you're loving it, then maybe it is something to pursue, but I think, I still think there's a better path to get there. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but just know that like, it's really hard to land a data science job to even be qualified to land a data science job right now, because the amount of math and the amount of programming is quite high. This video is brought to you by Julius, your AI data analyst companion. Connect to your database and or your business tools, pull insights in minutes, no coding required. Thanks Julius for sponsoring this episode. The number two reason that you maybe shouldn't be a data scientist right now is it honestly requires a little bit of like bona fides. I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly, but like you need some, not certifications, but honestly, it's seeming like when you're applying to data scientist jobs, most of them are saying masters in data science. Now, I haven't actually analyzed that statistically, but that's just kind of what I've been seeing anecdotally. Um, and once again, masters, it's going to take a long time to get. Uh, the good news is you probably will learn some of the programming, some of the math that I talked about earlier, but it's just going to take a freaking long time. We're talking like probably two years to get a master's in data science. I guess maybe if you're doing it full time, maybe it would only take one year, but one, it's just taking a long time, right? We're talking years, not months here. And two, it's also going to be expensive, right? Because masters are not cheap. I think the cheapest that you can get like a master's in data science is like probably, yeah, $13,000 if I'm going to be honest. I got my master's in data analytics from Georgia Tech 
I have a review on it if you want to check it out sometime. It cost me about $13,000. And I think that's about the cheapest that you could go. So you kind of need a master's if you're going to try to be a data scientist. At least you have a lot better shot because it is kind of listed as a requirement. I don't think it is a requirement necessarily. I think you could land a data scientist job without a master's degree, but I think it's honestly going to be pretty hard. So unless you're wanting to spend like two years and let's just say like on average $20,000 in student loans, maybe you shouldn't be a data scientist. Reason number three that maybe you should avoid the data scientist role right now is there's actually a lot more openings in different data roles. And let me explain. So if you want to do this experiment, you can, you know, uh, I did this experiment and I'll tell you the results here in a second, but there's actually more data engineering jobs open right now than there are data scientist jobs. Um, not by a lot, about 10% more. And there's actually double data analyst jobs open than there are data scientist roles open right now. And that's in the US and I, I used LinkedIn. You can go to LinkedIn and go to the search bar and you can type in data analyst or data scientist and I did United States, so it might be different if you're in a different country. Um, and it shows you the number of results. And I think the results for data scientist was 8,000, data engineer was 9,000, and data analyst was like 17,000. So data scientist has like the lowest amount of openings right now. And I'll talk about why I think that's the case here in a second. Data engineering has a little bit more, but there's also a lot less barrier to entry for data engineer and for a data analyst as well. Data engineering, it requires a lot of programming and a lot of logic, a little bit less math, and you're not doing as much like machine learning necessarily, but honestly, probably more programming. So if you are kind of a programmer, maybe that's the route you want to go because there is more job openings right now. And there's not master's degrees, like there's not really a ton of data engineering master's degrees out. This degree doesn't even really exist yet. So that's, that's nice, right? Because when there's a degree that doesn't exist, you don't have to have it to land the roles. And uh, I think data engineering is kind of exploding with AI recently because AI really at the core of it, at, I guess at the beginning is a data engineering problem because it's a lot of data. You want to basically feed these models and it's a lot of unstructured data. So it's like, how do we best structure the unstructured data. Um, so data engineering roles are, are getting more popular. They don't require like a master's degree, but there is a lot of programming. I don't want to make it seem like it is a lot. It is easy to land a data engineering job because it's not, but I do think it is easier to land a data engineering job right now than it is a data scientist. Easier than both of those, I think, is a data analyst role. One, there's a lot more roles open right now, right? About double. And two, like the barrier to entry is so much lower. You don't have to know nearly as much programming and you don't have to know nearly as much math. So you're able to land a role a lot more quickly. And that's like huge. So spoiler alert, that is my whole pitch to you is like, hey, put becoming a data scientist on the shelf for just a little bit, become a data analyst first and then pivot into that. We'll talk about that here in a second. The fourth reason you should maybe consider not being a data scientist right now is I do think the data scientist jobs are at least stagnant. I don't think they're down necessarily, but data science, it takes longer to make a business impact. And what I mean by that is if you're a business and you're looking to make money right now, you're looking for profits today, data science is much more of an investment than data analytics and data engineering. Data engineering is a really good investment for companies right now because you can't really do data analytics or data science without good data engineering. You can't really do much with data if you don't have good data engineering because it's like, how do the data scientists access the data? How do they know that it's clean? So businesses investing in data engineering, it makes a lot of sense right now because you can't even really get much return on investment spent in data until you have data, right? And data engineering is all about having data and storing it properly and effectively. Once you have that data stored, right, and, and everything's all set up, that's when you can start doing data science or data analytics. I differentiate those between data science is looking more towards the future, like predicting stuff, right? And data analytics looking more towards the past and saying what happened. Um, so data analytics is like more reporty, like this is what happened in the past type of thing. Data science being this is what will happen in the future or, or predicting some sort of behavior or something like that. It's just a lot easier to do data analytics. It's like so much easier to do uh, data analytics than it is data science. And you can get those results a lot quicker. Like I can make a report on what happened in the past and probably what? A fourth of the time is that it's going to take me to predict the future. And as someone who's been a data analyst and a data scientist, I just know doing the data science work takes longer because once again, it's more complex. You're doing more programming. You're, you're doing more math. It's a harder problem to solve. 
And so it just takes longer for the businesses to actually see the fruits of their labor versus a data analyst. You can almost see the results kind of immediately. So I, I think you'll have more business impact as a data analyst because the results are very clear. And I think as a data scientist, I think some of their these long-term projects, a lot of these long-term projects in data science fail too. Like I worked as a data scientist for ExxonMobil. Uh, I worked on, let's see, I don't know, like four big initiatives. And I would say half of them probably failed, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't know that for a fact. I kind of left uh, before some of those products were finished. One of them that was even considered a success, like it wasn't even really being implemented or used. I basically built that project in what, 2018? And when I left in 2021, it was like, everyone really liked it. They're like, this is awesome. But I don't really think we had very many users of the tool. So I don't know if you even count that as a success or not. But my point here is like, looking at that, that was two and a half years to even get to the point where, oh, we think this is going to be a success, but it hasn't been yet. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how long it might take to actually impact the business. And I think when you're impacting business, one, you get promoted more often. You get raises, those types of things. You get more clout, I guess. Uh, but two, more roles of those types of roles open up. And I just think that the, the return on investment for data scientists right now might be a little bit fuzzy. Now, that's not true for every company. Like a lot of companies make their money with data science work and they have already have a really good data engineering infrastructure. That might be some of the bigger tech companies that like are bajillionaires, right? Like those types of companies, they still probably make their, their money with, with data science. I think it's very valuable, like social media apps, like Instagram, Facebook, those types of things. But I think a lot of smaller operations, they might be getting a little bit tight on data scientists because the return on investment, it's high risk, high reward, I guess. Uh, data engineering and data analysts, it's, it's a lot more sure of an investment. So I think that might be one of the reasons why you should actually consider these roles. I think you should become a data analyst because like I said earlier, it's easy. It's easy to learn. There's a lower barrier to entry and there's a lot more roles open. And my whole philosophy is I think you should become a data scientist someday if you want to be hundred percent. But the cool thing is this data analyst role is kind of like a gateway role where the, the, the fence is not hard to get over. The barrier is not hard. You can get in this data analyst role pretty easily. I have a whole roadmap on how to actually become a data analyst. Um, you can watch that on YouTube uh, up here in the card, or if you're listening to the podcast via audio, I'll have it uh, linked in the show notes down below. That'll kind of explain everything that you need to do step by step. But my whole point is like, you can become a data analyst and then you can get paid to become a data scientist down the road because that's, that's also true. Companies will pay you to learn. I actually have another video about like my whole philosophy of like how to get paid to learn. I'll have it right here on a YouTube card or in the show notes down below. Um, but just like the short of it is this that once you're in a company, they're going to invest in you to learn things. You're going to have access to like free LinkedIn learning. You're going to have access to like go to conferences. Uh, a lot of these companies will even pay for a master's degree. I know I have some students in my accelerator bootcamp who I've worked with. I actually interviewed them both. So I'll pop them up in, in cards up here and have their, their links in the show notes down below. Um, but one was a math teacher and one was in quality assurance. And I helped them both pivot into like more data analyst roles. And now their companies are paying for them to go get a data science master's degree. And I think that's awesome because now instead of, you know, going into debt, $20,000 to become a data scientist, you already have a data job. You have income coming in, data income, you know, data analysts get paid well. It's not like it's a, a crappy uh, salary and they can get paid to learn on the job and have school paid for by the company. So I think that is like a win, win, win. I think that is the route that you should take. So I'm not saying data science is dead. I'm not saying don't become a data scientist. I'm just saying if you want to become a data scientist, I think you should become a data analyst first, then learn to become a data scientist on the job. You can learn Python on the job. You can learn machine learning on the job. And that way you're getting income coming in while you're learning. Because I can't tell you how many people have come to me. Hey, Avery, I have a master's in data science. I can't land a job. It's so much easier once you already have some sort of a data job and a current data job too. You can watch this video if you're watching on YouTube next. That will help you learn to get started. Check out the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Thank you guys for listening and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.